Hi guys, today we will be looking at limiting quarter loss. Right, so we need to be able to explain how plants and insects balance the need for gas exchange and the need to conserve water. So in terms of the learning objectives, we are here now. Okay, so we will be looking at the structure uh, of, uh, of the uh, plants and the uh, insects, uh, how, do, uh, how they can actually limit the water loss. So to start with, we've got the past paper question here. Okay, we've got uh, we've got a uh, few different uh, treatments here. We've got treatment one, two, and three. One, there is no uh, ceiling. Two, we've got the air ceiling on the uh, lower surface, and three, both lower and upper surfaces are covered. So, so just the purpose of each of the treatments uh, here. So let's specific treatment number one. There is no ceiling on any of those surfaces of the leaf, so gas exchange can be taking place as normal. So it's our control. Treatment number two. Then we've got the lower surface which is covered. So of course gas exchange it's not going to be taking place through the lower surface, but still some small amount of the gas exchange can be taking place through the upper surface. Finally, treatment free, both were covered, so of course there will be no gas exchange. So what is then the purpose? That's the purpose, okay? Number one means that the stomatas are open, so no more uptake of carbon dioxide can be taking place. Number two uh, stops them, stops the uptake of the carbon dioxide through the upper surface. And number three, of course, stops the whole uptake of carbon dioxide. There is no. Okay, so that's the effective uh, ceiling checking if it's effective because there should be no gas exchange at all. Right? So let's start with the insects. So limiting water loss in insects. Of course, uh, insects will live on the land, so we call them uh, terrestrial water is uh, it can evaporate really easily through the uh, through the surface of the body and they can of course become dehydrated so what are the adaptations to reduce water loss in insects so we've mentioned that in our insects video so they have a small surface area to the volume ratio so of course that will minimize the water loss they've got waterproof coverings on the body surface so that's another adaptation. And they've got spiracles, okay? So spiracles can, of course, close to prevent the water loss, but that will conflict with the uptake of oxygen that they need for respiration, right? And, uh, and of course, all those adaptations, okay, may, uh, they are here to, uh, to, pre uh, to, prevent the, uh, to prevent the water loss, but also... Uh, the insects cannot use their body surface to diffuse respiratory gases. Okay, so that's another another information to remember. So it's not taking place through the surface; it's taking place through the spiracles. But in terms of the limiting water loss in plants, it's quite different. There are different uh, different types of the plants because they live in different habitats, of course. So we've got. Uh, mesophytes, so they will be living in the habitats that they've got. Uh, they've got enough water. Uh, xerophytes, so they are adapted to live in dry habitats. Halophytes, this is uh, to uh, uh, to be uh, able to survive in salty habitats. And hydrophytes, so uh, this is to uh, do with the adaptations of the uh, habitats of the fresh water. So we're going to be looking at the adaptations of xerophytes because that's what your specification actually asks you to do so. So again, now we're so what table. So get yourself a pen and paper now. So one of the adaptations are hers. So why are they important? Because they will trap water vapor. So uh, water potential gradient will decrease. Stomata in pits, okay, so why is it important? Again, they can trap water vapor and uh, water potential gradient decrease. 
they have a thick waxy layer so that increases diffusion distance so remember on the upper uh, uh, upper layer we've got this thick uh, cuticle so that's even further distance of diffusion waxy cuticle again here so reduces evaporation transpiration remember saying that reduces water loss it's not good enough so say it reduces water loss through evaporation or transpiration would be much better curve leaves so trap water vapor and water potential gradient is decreased spines needles so reduces surface area to volume ratio right so all those adaptations of the plants uh, are here to make sure that they prevent water loss uh, through evaporation so as you can see all of those answers are more or less the same so it's not easy you know it's not hard to remember it's easy to get on with the adaptations right so few questions here you can pause the video for a second and uh, try to get uh, answers for those questions right ready okay so again here we're just coming up with the adaptations so for question number one you should uh, you should be thinking about uh, the fact that uh, they require a uh, yeah, thin permeable surface with a large area okay so uh, so they those features can lead to uh, con uh, to loss of water by evaporation waterproof covering to the body okay number three photosynthesis um so the, so they can uh, have the, so they need a large surface area to capture sunlight so that's from our so what table and uh for uh, for a uh, explain why rolling up the leaves helps to reduce water loss so again our so what table so um the, uh, so water evaporating will, uh, from the leaf is trapped so decreases uh, water potential okay and the final question uh, why would rolling the leaf uh, the, the, the other way would not be effective why is this a case it's to do of course with uh, with the water potential gradient that would be increased and a lot of water vapor would be lost okay right few questions here so we got the table got uh, some information here and the concentration of carbon dioxide in the air has changed with time use the data to explain how to describe how describe so say what you can see basically change that's really interesting word on the exam if they're asking you to change you do not just say that it's different you need to say how is it different okay so age here and quite uh, quite tricky because as you can see this is the pre uh, present day this is uh, ages ago concentration of carbon dioxide and the mean number of stomata look you've got standard deviation that's something to be looking at as well so concentration of carbon dioxide if we're looking that way it it's increasing okay so uh, so in all the days was lower at present it's higher but in terms of the number of stomata it's all the way around so it was higher before lower now so you need to be able to to put that in the sentences so the more recent the uh, sample the greater the concentration so that's what we just did okay highest concentration at the present lower before and increases most in the last 5000 years so have a look at the at the pattern here okay so we can see the biggest difference it's in between those years or you could just say that a, a, a light increase between 30 and 50 15 years ago so you can see here clearly it's not much difference the huge uh, the biggest difference was found here so this is described this is use data to describe what you can see okay so uh, another question is that scientists calculated the mean number of stomata per uh, millimeter square and the standard deviation what does the standard deviation show what's the definition of standard deviation it's a spread of data around the mean okay so spread of data around the mean if you didn't include those you're not getting marks okay so make sure make sure you've got that right 
Alright, so that's everything for them uh, for this topic today. See you later.